I'm going home tomorrow. That's nice. Yes. Mother is coming to collect me on the train. Yeah. Do come back and visit us. Oh, I will not be coming back. I am leaving. For good. Not coming back. Not to this place. Not ever. It is a shame. You've been with us a while now. I am quite sure that I have only been here for a short time. Miss Taylor, how long do you think you've been here? Do you like it? Is it not nice? We're getting married soon. Oh, that's good. You must be happy. He is very handsome. Miss Taylor, do you not know how long you've been here with us? Long time? No. Not that long. I do not know. I cannot remember. I was only meant to be here for a little while. That is what Father said when he sent me away. And in that time, has your mother, or your fiancé, ever come to take you home? I am going home tomorrow. But what if it's not safe for you to go home? What if your mother can't come? My fiancé would come for me. He would take me home and he would marry me. He gave me a ring. See? Don't you like it here, Miss Taylor, with the other inmates? I suppose they are all right. The nursing sisters are nice, sometimes, even if they have no clue what they are doing. They've all studied and qualified as nursing sisters. Not in the specific area of mental defectiveness, such as I have studied, but they do the best they can. We all do the best we can. Things have come a long way since doctors used leeches or put holes in people's heads to release evil spirits they thought were causing mental defects in a person. New medicines, like lithium, are of great help. And it is crowded. Very crowded and noisy. Very noisy. Yes, we are a little overcrowded. Yes, we do struggle to find the beds to accommodate the more than 1,900 people that get sent here. I am quite confident, however, that in the future there will always be enough beds, enough nurses and enough doctors for anyone that needs a special kind of help such as we provide here. Why all the high brick walls and metal gates? They are everywhere. You're just trying to keep us in. Keep us locked up out of the sights and minds of all those people I see staring at us from the other side of those walls. Are they afraid of us? They are afraid, Miss Taylor. Of what they don't understand about the human mind and its workings and why sometimes it goes wrong. Some of those people that you see on the other side of those walls walking by are the very same people that volunteer their time every day to come here to make the lives of our inmates the best they can be. They care a great deal about others. Their efforts are, I should think, to be considered as, well, heroic. Still looks and feels like a bloody prison. Apologies, Doctor. Mother says a lady should never swear, not without good cause. It is not uncommon these days for those with mental deficiencies to express vulgarity. Violence such as that is to be expected. It may appear as if a prison, Miss Taylor, but the newly created Metropolitan Asylums Board needed facilities sufficiently large enough to house the goodly number of people that require the special kind of help that only these kind of institutions can provide. And prisons are what they had experience in building. Besides, Miss Taylor, you have free roam of the ample grounds. They took her from me. My baby! They took her from me and then they put me in a room, not a nice room. A room with mattresses on the walls and not even... That was for your own safety, Lily. You were not doing very well at all when your father committed you with us six months ago. Not surprising, really. You were young, unmarried and had just given birth to a child. Your melancholy is an obvious defect of moral control, both of which were quite severe from what I understand, had become very worrisome for your parents. 
I would have been much better. I would never have become so troubled if they had not made me feel so wretched about... about my condition. That is why Father sent me so far away from our house in London, from his sight and the sight of all his friends, all the way out to wherever I am now. Leavesden, Miss Taylor. You're in the newly built Leavesden Asylum. Asylum? Do you mean like a lunatic asylum? Is that what I am now, Doctor? A lunatic? No. That is a very outdated term used by those too ignorant to know any better. This is a safe place of refuge. That is the true meaning of the word asylum. A safe place for people like you who need a special kind of help and have nowhere else to go. You wouldn't have wanted to end up on the streets, now would you, like so many others these days? You were disgusted by me. By what I did and who I did it with. They, father, told me as much. And often... They didn't want anyone to know. Miss Taylor, it is indeed a rare occurrence these days for a young girl to experience such melancholies after childbirth. But your parents believed you had lost control of your faculties and given up on yourself and your child. They were at their wit's end. They didn't know what to do. That is why they committed you here with us. But why? Why can I not see her? Why can I not care for her as I should be doing? Your baby is being well cared for. She's just across the road with the experienced staff of the St Pancras Industrial School. And you mean workhouse? How convenient to have one just across the street. I've heard people here talk about that place. It's very... And when the board and I feel that you are well enough, you might be able to care for her yourself. That is what we, what you want, isn't it? I am going home tomorrow. We shall see. I've looked at great length into the reasons, the causes, if you will, for your current maladies, and I've ruled out the most common of these, usually attributed to women, including hereditary disposition, menstrual derangement, women's troubles, imagined or otherwise. And I've concluded that you are suffering from hysteria, melancholies, and gathering of the mind. And these are the direct result of your traumatic childbirth and the giving up of your child. Do you understand what I'm saying, Miss Taylor? I brought my friend with me today. His name is Theodore E. Bear, but I just call him Teddy. That is my fiancé's name. Someone here made him. Made him with their own hands. He's my only friend in this place, and the only one I talk to. You talk to him often, Lily? Not that often. Do you ever hear him talk to you? I would not like to say, Doctor, I do not want you to think I am more troubled than you already do. I was going to give him to my daughter when I saw her. When will I see her, Dr. Shaw? Soon, Miss Taylor. Soon. Yes? Dr. Shaw. Apologies for bothering you, sir, but, well, it's Miss Taylor. Her mother has arrived at the front gate, stating that herself and a young gentleman claiming to be a fiancé, they're here to take her home. Thank you, Isaac. That will be all.
Morning, Jean. Sorry I'm late. How are we feeling today? I'm going home tomorrow. At least that's what they tell me. Are you really? Well, that's really good news, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. My mum's coming up to get me on the train. Or my boyfriend might drive up and collect me if her train is late or cancelled. A bit of a British rail. Uh, well, you seem to be um, doing very well with your treatment plan since you've been with us. Your therapist reports that you are responding well with the behavioural therapy. And you seem to be tolerating the new medication well enough. About time, too. I've been here six months, and that's long enough for me. Thank you very much. Considering what you were going through last year, pregnant, your parents throwing you out because of it and living on the streets, and then having to give up... Gina, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. That's okay, Dr. Shepard. You can say it. Giving up my baby daughter for adoption. Even thinking about an adoption is harrowing, even at the most compassionate at times. Added to that what you were going through before you had to make this monumental decision. And it's no wonder that you ended up in such a depressed, manic and traumatised state of mind. Wow, do you think? Some people who suffer from postnatal depression or um, psychosis never manage it well enough on their own to be able to leave here. They'll be residing with us for the rest of their lives. Is that why you call us all residents? Like good old Ronald, the guy with all the plastic models in his room? He's already been here for most of his adult life. Mm, yeah, something like that. It's called progress, I think. You see, when this place opened, individuals like yourself were called inmates. Then they were called patients. And now you're called residents. Who knows what the NHS will come at next to label people who see the world a little bit different to some other people. Yeah, the NHS. Not helpful service. Be nice now. It's not as though we're still using cold water immersion therapy like they did when this place opened. We've come a long way since then. Hey, what can I say, Doc? Just calling it like I see it. I mean, really. Picked up off the streets of Watford by the police, who, by the way, had no clue about what I was going through or what to do with me. Locked up against my will for 72 hours. Only saw a real doctor once for about five minutes, if that. Pumped full of drugs and not the fun kind. Then bundled up and shipped off to this place. Nope. Don't see that as being very helpful service, national or otherwise. I'm sure that the local constabulary we're doing the very best that they could at the time, given the knowledge and resources that they have. It's not like they are going to stop answering calls from help from people who have level, crisis level mental health problems, are they? Well, if that was their best, I wasn't impressed. This is why I work with them so closely. This is why they called me about you. So you didn't get put into prison like a common criminal when you obviously needed to be here with us, where we can give you the kind of help that you really need. Yeah, well, it just keeps getting better, Doc. Now that I am barely 18, I'm an adult, according to those in charge, and suddenly they don't have a place for me here? I'm getting kicked out to go live in some kind of residential halfway house out in the middle of fucking nowhere with a bunch of loonies on my own with no support. Let's just take a break, Jean. Slow down, and let's focus on what you've learned. I mean, I might be okay on the other side of those walls, but what about Ida or Jeffrey? They can barely make a piece of toast between the pair of them. How the hell are they going to take care of themselves alone, out in a community they know nothing about? Feeling better now? Yeah. Sorry about that. I guess I am a little more anxious about leaving this place than I thought. I mean, what's going to happen to me when I'm not here? This is the only refuge I have from all those thoughts that keep gathering up and running around my mind like so many horses at Ascot, but without all the people wearing funny hats. You see, all these thoughts that are running around your head, 
could be diagnosed as attention deficit disorder. Now, it's a pretty new condition, and it's more of a learning disability than a mental health condition. Oh, fabulous. Let's add that to my never-ending list of problems that I'm going to have to take care of on my own. At least here, I have volunteers like Felicity around to talk to or to help me if I stumble a little. But now who is going to fucking catch me if I fall? Who? Do you think you might fall, Jim? No. Yes. I don't fucking know. Isn't that why I'm better off here in this place? Unfortunately, this care in the community scheme that the government keeps on talking about might actually happen. Places like Leavesden have started to see the writing on the wall and are preparing to shut down. I'll still see you when I'm in this part of the county or if I can fit you in. But Jean, we are considerably understaffed right now. But hey, you're going home soon, right? Yeah, I'm going home all right. But going home to what? A father who won't talk to me or have anything to do with me because I embarrassed him by getting pregnant. A so-called boyfriend who couldn't be bothered to visit me once in six months. Hell, sometimes I wonder if he's even real or just a figment of my imagination. Oh, wait, he got me pregnant. That was pretty real. Or home to some community housing project on my own with no support. I see you brought a friend with you. Teddy, is it? Actually, according to the name tag he had on when I found him, his name is Theodore E. Bear. But I just call him Ted for short. You get it? Teddy Bear. He was here when I found him. He looked pretty lonely, stuffed away in the back of that cupboard where no one could see him. Not surprised, really. You know, Doc, that old out-of-sight, out-of-mind chestnut. One of the nurses, Pam, the one who's been here for donkey's years, she told me he's been around for as long as she can remember. It's nice to have a friend like Ted around when you're living in a big old scary place like this. Well, if Ted's been here as long as you think, I bet he could tell some fascinating stories about this place, couldn't he? You do know, Doc, that stuffed teddy bears aren't real and can't really talk, right? No, no, they can't. Not unless they're called Paddington, of course. <clears throat> well, I think we'll just wait until somebody writes a book about this place. Well, if someone ever does, I hope they tell the truth about it. It may not be perfect, but it's a lot better than what the general public think they know about it. Especially since all they seem to do is peer over the fucking walls like they're looking into a zoo. And now they're talking about closing it down? Brilliant. Just brilliant. This place is needed. I need it. It's all just rumours and talk at the moment. I shouldn't worry too much about it. And I'm sure there are people out there that really want to have their say about what happens to places like Leavesden. Who? Like the people that are inside here? The staff that work here? Do you really think that anyone is going to say what's on their minds? Do you really think that anyone's going to listen to us? Trust me, Doc, you have to be careful what you say nowadays and who hears you say it. Otherwise, you'll end up in the dole queue faster than the Labour just lost the last election. Jean, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut this session short. Just remember that we're always here for you, and always will be. And wherever you end up, I'm sure it'll feel like home. Yeah, I suppose. Anyway, Dr Shepherd, thank you for everything. No problem, Jean. That's what we're here for. And we always will be.